Hey everybody, I'm Bonnie Hunter. Welcome to Quilt Cam in the Basement at Quiltville, North Carolina, where I'm tonight sewing more, yes more, I know, many, many, many more string spider web blocks. Um, but what a good time of the year to be making string spider webs. Spider webs are everywhere in nature and in Halloween, which is next week. And we need to make lots, lots more of these. So this is what I'm working on. You know, it's been three weeks since our last quilt cam time. I had to double check and actually look at the dates and find out what the last date we met was. And it was October 1st. And here we are getting towards the end of October. And I love this time of year. I love the leaves. I love the crisp mornings. I don't like it dark so early. <laughs> but that will change here uh, shortly. And... Um, you know, just driving down the road, watching leaves just blow in the wind and just kind of float on the breeze. It was just a, a gorgeous day today here in North Carolina. I am sewing today on my 1950s pink atlas. So what's not to like about a sewing machine in milkshake pink? Um, I found her off of Craigslist. I picked her up on my way to somewhere where I was teaching and um, have cleaned her up and have loved her since. She's a good, good straight stitcher, very strong motor heavier than uh, a boat anchor. She weighs about 42 pounds, 43 pounds, something like that. She does straight stitch only, but that's all I need for a piecing machine is just a good straight stitch. If you are new with us on Quilt Cam, this is where I just work on my own project in my basement while you're working on yours. It's not a class or a lesson, but I will answer questions if you email me at quiltville at gmail.com. Or if you're watching this embedded in my blog post, um, you'll find a blue guest book button in the left-hand sidebar. I have to think today. It's been one of those kind of days. If You, you can leave a comment there if you are um, not familiar with leaving comments on blogs and you feel more comfortable leaving a comment in the comments um, section. That's perfect. If you want to leave a comment on this post, we do ask if you are anonymous that you leave your name and your email address so that we can get back to you. If you're watching on um, Google Live Hangouts, I think you can get me through email too. What I can't do is answer via Facebook or Instagram or anything like that because the laptop is quite a ways away from me. I'm over here at the sewing machine. And so I use my trusty Samsung Galaxy phone to answer questions and uh, share your photos and stuff while we're on. And yes, I am. I'm all plugged into the cord because I looked at the battery and it was down to 35%, which is not good. <laughs> for quilt cam time. So what am I doing here? The free pattern for um, the string spider web is found on my blog, which is quiltville.blogspot.com under the free patterns tab at the top of the blog. There's over 40 free patterns up there for you to get your scraps under control and, and try things and, and use things and have a lot of fun doing it. So check that out. It's under S for string spider web. The directions show you how to cut out and make a template for this fabric kite. And then I simply use a dab of glue stick to stick the kite to my paper template. This is half of an eight and a half inch square. So eight and a half inch square cut on the diagonal. The pattern will tell you that. And then I am just adding strips of fabric side to side to side. So here's one where I have just sewn one purple one through. The reason why I have paper here is simply for stability. It doesn't stretch this direction. It doesn't stretch this direction. There is no bias to paper. So it gives me a very, very nice flat block that doesn't have a volcano or a mountain in the center of it because there is no excess fabric bulk and there is no um, bias that I'm sewing against. So it really helps to give me stability. And then I remove it when I'm done. This is what it looks like after it is completely pieced over. You can see that there is a margin all the way around the edge. I'd like to give myself at least a quarter to a half an inch excess just in case. When they are all nice and trimmed up, did I have a half block somewhere? I thought I did. Must have dropped it. When they're all trimmed up, they will look just like this. And you sew the four sections together into a block. I am sewing with absolutely everything. I've got baskets back here, buckets, bins, you name it. I don't let a piece of fabric go if it can be sewn somewhere. And because of that, I have this incredible uh, stash in the basement that sometimes makes me feel guilty. I've also got a bag of uh, vintage scraps over here that were gifted to me by my friend Kevin. 
Some of these are feed sacks. Some of them are, are shirting stripes. Some of them are 1940s and 50s prints. They've all been cut into squares, but they're different sizes of squares. And I measured them with a ruler and they are all like the biggest ones are like one and seven eighths. So they're not, they're not even a happy size. Um, but there's just some really, really cute little prints. Can you see that? Nice little um, quote unquote low volume, which I would call a neutral. They're just fun. And I'm using these as I get towards the ends to be able to have a place to use the fun stuff up. So I'm going to sew, get this going. When I'm doing string piecing, I will pull a string from the basket and I will use it until it is gone. Look, this one matches my shirt exactly. Huh. I will use it until it's gone. It takes too much time to use part of a strip, put the strip back, dig for something else, and eventually you're going to pull that same strip out again anyway. So I just like to uh, use it up till it's gone. When you're making 100 blocks, it's okay if there are a few repeats, and I usually repeat them in a different order so they're not in the same place on every block all the time. Okay, get this going here. I just wound some bobbins, so I should be good to go. I'm giving myself a, about a quarter inch seam allowance there. And I'm working on two units at a time, so I can always leave one under the machine and one here to uh, pull forward and add to. So you can see I've been working side to side on this one. And it, you don't have to piece these in any certain order. You could do side to side and keep it even all the way across, or you can do one side and then come back and do the other. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab this one. This one kind of has a little funny, funny, funny little texture. I wonder whose dress or apron that was. We're gonna sew it right in. I find this kind of piecing very stress relieving. Got some fun turquoise batik here. Sew that on. I do pre cut. I pre cut about a half an inch bigger on either end than what I need, just so that I don't have a lot of strips hanging in my um, chain piecing. Just pull it forward and we keep going. So that side's full. Now we'll find something for the other side. What have I not used yet? How about this? Kind of, I've already got red there. What about this one? It's kind of a rust with some gold metallic on it. That'll work. I find that I'm not as shy with string quilts and scrap quilts as I would be if I were buying yardage. I don't tend to buy stuff that has gold sparkles on it. But if it's in the scrap bin that somebody else gave me and donated, I will I will sew it in there and I will put gold sparkles next to 1930s repro just because we can. Take another couple of seams here and then we'll see who's tuning in with us tonight. Hopefully the sound is on. I don't see a lot of uh, anything coming through saying. No sound, no sound, no sound. And I see the little green lights moving on the mic. So we must be good. Yeah, this is coming along just great. I do a lot of finger pressing, but I also keep a hot iron right here close to me so I can give it a good press. So here we are, coming along so far, just like yay. Let's check in and see. I remembered to put the phone on vibrate before we started, or else it would be ding, 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 all over the place. From the top, we've got Katie Gardner who says, Mom, Bonnie, and me, joining you from Indiana with my mom, Maggie. This time, my hexies came with me, and she's rug hooking. And she sent a picture. Oh, my goodness. There she is. And I can see she's got her, uh, looks like her little tool there doing some rug hooking. Wonderful. We are an equal opportunity craft quilt cam night. You can do whatever you want. We're just glad to spend the time with you tonight. So hello, Maggie. 
And how do I get this to go back? So it's, it's uh, Maggie and Katie are with us tonight. Very nice. And Katie's got her hexes. See if I can make that biggie size just a little bit. Looks like she's got a stripe in the center with some red on the outside. And then she's encircling that with green right now. Really cute color combos. I like those fabrics. Great job. And we have CB, who says, well, I'm watching tonight live for a change. Tonight I'm not quilting because I have to finish a Jane Austen costume for my granddaughter. Only 11, and she's already pri read Pride and Prejudice on her own. Love, you, love your spiderweb project. You know, when I was in um, England in August, we went to Bath. And one of the, I would say a key moment for me, is um, standing on the doorstep of the house where Jane Austen actually lived for, oh, maybe a few months. I don't know how long she lived there. It was number five or number nine or whatever it was. But just standing there where, where Jane Austen actually lived and breathed and walked those streets, that, that was really kind of cool. To me, that's even, <laughs> I like that even better than, the, than seeing somebody famous walking down the street in London. I just, Jane Austen is wonderful. So very cool for you for doing that um, costume for her. Ness says, hello from Wyoming. So glad for quilt cam. I needed some sew time and girl time and this is it. Woohoo! This is all I've got for girl time too. I live in a house with two men. Um, I am working on my sister's choice and have three blocks left. It's queen size. Then working on enlarging my wonky wishes stars to king size. We just decided to get a bigger bed. So I am so happy I hadn't quilted it yet. No kidding. And you know how I feel. It, it may seem like a huge chore to do it, but you're already interested in the project. You've got the fabric, so that's not stopping you. So just keep sewing until it's done. I love it when I don't have to worry about the next project. I can just concentrate on the one I already know about. Then I don't have to um, get lost on something else. She says, thanks for taking the time for Quilt Cam. I love the pink atlas. Oh, I do too. The only thing is she's missing um, her, her light bulb burned out. So her she has a um, little door opens here and light bulb goes in there. I just need to get a replacement. So I've got the Ikea light just shining down where I need to be sewing. And it really does give a good light and it doesn't get hot. Whatever I put in here is likely to get hot. So I'm happy for this one. Betsy says, wondering if you could give me a tip or two to help keep my borders from being wavy. I have been cutting the border length of fabric instead of width of fabric, and it's better, but I still have a few waves on my current pineapple quilt. Um, as far as waves go, waves happen if you don't measure across the center of your quilt. If you are measuring the center and then some side to side, and you're taking an average, and that average is bigger, then the direct center measurement, then your border will wave. Um, if your border is smaller than the center measurement, shorter, like let's say you averaged and the average was shorter, so you shorted, shorted it from what the center measurement was, the border will be too tight for your quilt center and then your, your quilt center is gonna mushroom up in the top. Um, it's, it's all in cutting, measuring, pinning, and and being careful as you sew and and unfortunately that that it comes not just at border time but through the whole quilt process um so i always measure my borders through the center top to bottom that's my measurement for the side borders add those press the seams toward the borders usually and then i measure again side to side and cut two borders that length including the two borders i just added in that measurement so you're going to include those borders and then put your top and bottom borders on but the center measurement is the most important if you want that quilt to not be wavy so i hope that helps you there and here's one from um suzanne who's oh she sent more hexies to Ooh, those look nice girl she says yay for quilt cam i'm watching and sewing up a new hexi quilt in retro aqua and red looks good i'm going to biggie size one of her um rosettes here and you can see she's got kind of a a blue star thing going in the center and then she's got the red and pinky stuff going around out there i really love the turquoise and red together that is just so classic thank you for sending that now i saw another message come through and this one is from my girlfriend irene who i'm seeing next week she says i can't believe i'm missing quilt cam for this oh she's doing stats what is she doing 
Oh my gosh. Okay. What are you doing, girlfriend? That does not look fun at all. So she's she's doing stats like like back in school type stats. That's what's showing on the monitor. Anyway, you can't see it, can you? Because it's all uh anyways, I'll be seeing Irene next week. She's going to whisk me away. I'm going to um, teach at Stitch in Heaven in Mineola, Texas. So if you're around that area, stop by and say hello. Um, we'll be teaching three workshops, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Monday, Irene is going to take me down to San Antonio. We're going to play for a few days. Finally meeting up with our cruisers in Houston on uh, Saturday evening. And we all leave for our Caribbean cruise on Sunday morning. So that's going to be my next week. I will probably be completely away from um, Wi-Fi and connectivity while I'm gone on this cruise. When I did the Alaska cruise, we were lucky enough that when we got to, to port, I had cell phone coverage. I will not have cell phone coverage in Honduras or Belize or Cozumel. And I am not paying a dollar a minute um, for the um, Wi-Fi online. I think it's, it's like $90 for an hour and a half of internet um, coverage. As much as I love y'all, <laughs> I'd rather buy fabric. So what my plan is, is I'm going to, over the next week while I'm with Irene at her house and stuff, take some time out. And I've got some great um, emails to share with you from other folks. Um, quilts they've made, stories they've told. If you have an interesting story about a quilt that you'd like to share, go ahead and send it in to me this week because I'll be writing these posts up so that we have something that will come live at least once a day while we are on on the road. If I hit a Wi-Fi hotspot while I am um, traveling, then I will probably do um, a Galaxy Gram from my phone and send up a couple live pictures if I can. But the blogging is not going to be extensive while I'm on this trip because it's not a hotel. I don't have free Wi-Fi and um, I'm not close enough to get um, a phone signal in my own country. So that's what we're thinking there. All right. Let's get out of this one and go back to the email. This is from 86 Degrees, Florida. This is from, uh, she says, getting so excited, packing for a week at the Houston Festival. Wish I could join you and Kim Deal on the cruise, but couldn't swing that much time off from work. I know how that goes, but at least you're going to have a great time at festival. Thanks for all you do and looking forward to Grand Illusion. I am too. Are you looking forward to Grand Illusion? One thing I was going to mention, um, and I don't know, it was discussed on our, our, our Facebook group, but please don't speculate on this, the sizes and the strips that we're going to use. I don't want anybody to cut anything ahead of time because it may just surprise you. Then again, it may not, but I, you know, I had people asking for the AccuQuilt dies that they could, would need to do this. You don't need an AccuQuilt die to do this. If you want to use the AccuQuilt die, that's a choice. But I am not um, obligated to tell you ahead of time what die that is because that gives away too many clues, too many sizes, too many shapes. So we're just going to reveal it one at a time. Um, other than that... Gosh, I'm just I'm just excited. Just enjoy enjoy the process. Enjoy the wait. Try not to unwrap this package before it's time. We want to enjoy each and every step. We don't want to tear into that package before it's ready. Okay. Here's from the Trail Hikers who says, for the mystery quilt, you have the the six and a half inch easy angle pictured. Can we use the four and a half inch size? Yes, you can use either the four and a half or the six and a half. Those will both give you the sizes that you need. The only difference between the two is the smaller one, you can only use up to four and a half inch strips. The larger one, you can use up to six and a half inch strips. I like that larger one because it fits my hand better. The smaller one, I get more slipping on um, just because of the dynamics of, of, you know, I guess proportion. I have man hands. So, um, but whichever one will work just fine. The 10 and a half inch one, Probably not. It's going to be too big for the job we're going to do with it. And the, nut, the paint stops, you know, you, there's, you can't use it to cut the small sizes because the paint only goes so far. So don't, don't bother with that one. Fiona says, made it. I made it back home in time to sew with you, working on Jack's chain blocks, lots of scrappy nine patches and set in seams, and she is loving it. Are you doing these all by hand, Fiona? She sent a, a photo. There's little nine patches, and you see how they're set with um, 
equilateral triangles. And is that a hexagon or an octagon or a something? It's a hexagon in the center. That's Jack's chain. So it's all continuous, lots of um, set in seams. Great way to use scraps. I love that quilt. That's adorable. Oh, and by the way, she's in Australia. Glad to have Australia joining us tonight. And we've got here, Catherine says, off-center log cabin. I fell in love with the vintage quilt you featured with the off-center log cabin blocks. I really would like to make one like it. The logs look narrow. Are they cut one inch or at one and a half inch? Catherine, I don't know because that photo that I posted to Facebook was just that, a photo. It wasn't even my photo. It was a photo of an antique quilt that someone took at a quilt show. So there are no measurements given to the block. Um, they look really narrow to me. So I was thinking either cut an inch or cut an inch and a quarter. I do not think they're cut inch and a half, but there, I have no way to measure. It's just, it's just a photo, but we'll have to play and see if we can come up with something similar. Anna says, Texas has the light on for you. Are you ready for some barbecue? Yeehaw. And that's Anna in Texas. Yes, I am ready for some big Smiths. I've got big Smiths on the brain and I have been, uh, rubbing it into the hubby who's not going with me because when we lived in Sulphur Springs, Big Smith's Barbecue was the best thing going. Beef ribs, yummy. I cannot wait. We're going to get a lot of um, photos this trip too because uh, when I was living in Texas, I wasn't quite blogging yet and uh, there were no photos of, gosh, I didn't even, I had a cell phone. But my cell phone at that time did not have a camera. Boy, has life ever changed? But we're going to have a lot of fun in Texas. So, yes, Anna, just let me know what night you want to do that, and I'm there, girlfriend. Okay. This one is from Simone, who says, Thanks for quilt cam. This time I can view live. Sewing binding on a black, red, and orange quilt for hubby. Your pink girl is beautiful. Isn't she gorgeous? Um, happy sewing, sun is shining, t-shirt weather, sewing with Bonnie and others, what's not to love, Simone from Australia, who sends this gorgeous picture of this quilt that looks like it's just glowing embers. Isn't that gorgeous? Black and red and orange. It's just rich, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And Kim says, hello from Minnesota. Making a baby quilt tonight here in Minnesota, gray and yellow, the colors. Definitely hard to find baby fabrics. Found a flannel charm packet, so randomly sewing them together. Quilt needed for baby shower on Saturday. Nothing like waiting to the last minute. You aren't just a kidding, girlfriend. So how are things up in Minnesota? We had, our weather hit 70s here today, but it was cold this morning. And things get a little bit foggy. I need some different colors here. What can I do? What's this green one? Ew. Maybe pink. This pink? No, that's on bias. I don't want that one. How about this one? That'll that'll work. We're just gonna sew a bit here. So the hubby's gone. He's in New York. And Jeff just got home from work, but I've been home alone all day. <laughs> just been kind of nice. I, I couldn't even determine when the last time I was home alone was. Good old fossil fern. Isn't it funny how you can look at a piece of fabric and just know what it is? Fabric to me is kind of like music was. You know, if you ask me in the, the 70s or the 80s or even into the 90s, what that song was, who that group was, I could tell you. I can't tell you anymore. And as far as new fabric lines and new designers and new fabric manufacturers, I can't tell you. There are so many. I just buy what I like. I don't know what the line is. Oftentimes, I'm just pawing through fat quarters, and lots of time they don't have salvage on them. So I have no idea whose fabric they are. I just like the color. I like the pattern, and I am always buying neutrals. And if it has words on it, even better. Okay. 
I made the choice not to go to quilt market this year because I was being begged by Stitch in Heaven to come teach and it was the only thing that I could give up and make room for them. And it's just as well. Okay, we need something. I really like these. They're, they're so easy and they use up so much stuff. I can turn that one sideways. So here's a deal. I'm, I'm right here towards this end. And if I put another strip there, it's likely not going to cover as far as I need it. So I have this little leftover end of a strip. And if I put it sideways like this, it'll be tall enough to flip up and cover the whole thing, which is good. So remember that little trick. I have tomorrow at home and then I leave on Thursday. So all the quilts are packed that I need to take. I'm not taking the whole trunk show because I have, um, I don't have a lecture in Texas. It's just three classes and the cruise quilt. So I have four, four quilts are going with me, that's all. But then there's all that cruise wear. You know, how many pairs of shoes do you take on a cruise? And I'm one of those pasty white girls who doesn't like to reveal skin in hot sunny places because I will fry. So it's going to be capris all the way. There's a purple. What do I need? I need something that I haven't used before. Let's pull something out. How about eh, khaki? Okay. So capris and a t-shirt sounds about right. A couple of fancy things to wear for dinner, but I don't want to have to do eight daytime outfits and eight nighttime outfits. This one's done. Fun stuff. Okay. We're going to come down to the bottom. Here's Casey who says, hello, tonight I'm working on a baby gift for my sister-in-law who will be having her second child next week. A beanie, small afghan, and a photo prop that looks like a turtle. Loving quilt camp tonight. And that's Casey from El Paso. And she's just been crocheting up a storm. How cute is that? She's got it posed on a baby doll so that we know what it looks like and if it fits. <laughs> That's awesome. Terrific. I like the colors too. Okay. This one is from the Cobbs who says, Betsy from Massachusetts here finished, or is that Maine? M-A? No, M-E is Maine, Massachusetts. Okay, finished string star quilt. Glad to be here at Quilt Cam. Looking forward to the mystery quilt. Every time I see MQ, I think that's got to be machine quilting. But, you know, MQ is mystery quilt. But here's a string star she just finished. I like that center. It's kind of a basket weave thing going on, kind of a rail fancy look. And that piano key border really ties it off nice. So that's a great way to use all those multicolored scraps of fabric. Beautiful. And this one is from Gail, who says, ooh, she's been doing green hexes. Finally watching you live tonight while working on my hexes that you inspired me to start. Thank you from Connecticut. And it's all greens in a large diamond format, separated by white paths. That looks great. Good job. That's really pretty. I love seeing all those greens together. Reminds me of Ireland and England. 
Marquet says, oh, I'm so excited about quilt cam tonight. It feels like forever, but it was only 20 days ago. I know it was three weeks. It was three weeks I had to check. I have enjoyed the show and share of all those beautiful quilts. And she wants to know if I have any advice I can share on the quality of fat quarters sold at big box stores versus local quilt stores. Um, you know, let's see, what did she say? Well, you know, um, I, I think as far as, as fabric goes that you do get what you pay for. Um, that if you're, if you're looking for ultra cheap, then chances are that the fabric may be fine for a while, but over time, I don't know what it's going to do. I, I sew with, with all kinds of fabrics. In this piece alone, I've got recycled fabric, old calicos from 1990, whatever. Something with sparkles on it and um, an old piece of um, feed sack. So I'm, I'm not the right one to ask. And I know if you were to ask anybody else, they might agree with me as far as, you know, you get, you, you're going to get what you pay for. There is a difference in quality. I can feel it. Now that said, some of the, the higher end fabrics at Joann's are fine. They feel just like the quilt shop quality fabric. So I go by how it feels. If it feels kind of scratchy and rough, and if the fabric is very white on the backside, but very colorful on the top, that just tells me that the dye is sitting on one side of the fabric, and it indeed may wash out. But then I have to ask myself too, what is the purpose of the quilt? My mom just made a top for um, my hubby that is recycled denim and other recycled fabrics mixed in. It's a fun quilt. It's going to be used and loved and hopefully loved until it falls apart and then, then we'll make another one. Um, you know, not all of our quilts are going to go hang in Houston or, or be displayed at Paducah or end up in the Bennington Museum in Vermont. So ask yourself what the purpose of, of the quilt is going to be. But other than that, you know, it's like we're not talking religion and we're not talking politics and I'm not going to bash one store over another or one fabric over another. I sew with what I like to sew with and I usually just go by how it feels. If it feels like it's good fabric and it seems to hold up in a washing, then, then by all means, use it. Okay. Um, Vicki says, I'm all set tonight. I have my chips and dip. <laughs> Where's mine? I want mine. My glass of wine and I'm watching my quilting shows I've recorded. How's that for multitasking? And that's Vicki in Cleveland. Glad to have you here tonight, Vicki. Kathy McKee says, it's a rainy evening in Victoria, BC, and I promised myself I'd finish this autumn-themed wool runner. This is my very first wool project, and it's time to see the end of it before I start hearing Christmas carols in the stores. And that's going to be anytime soon here. But that is just beautiful. I'm going to turn the photo sideways to see if we can get it biggie so you can see her wool runner. I'm going to biggie it right there. Really, really pretty. She's got rusty oranges and browns and golds and greens on a, looks like a black wool background. That is just beautiful. I love that. You know, wool applique is one of those things I'd love to do. In fact, um, yeah, I'll probably peek in or I'll try to peek in on Kim's class while we're on the cruise because she's teaching a wool applique thing. I've never done it. My big fear is I'd have to start a whole new stash because I'd want it all. So right now I'm just sticking with cottons. That's really pretty, Kathy. I love it. Kevin says... Yahoo Quilt Cam. Been working on Blue Ridge Beauty for my sweet cousin that gave me our grandma's treadle. Hey, Bonnie, I've been wanting to ask you for a while. How much do you analyze your blocks when laying out your quilts? Do you fret or are you more organic with your layouts? Oh, I'm completely organic. As I was sewing these together, the only thing I was, I sewed the blocks just into block halves first. So I had all of these different halves. And then I just started matching halves together. And as long as they weren't touching the same fabric, you know, the same fabric adjoining like this, I just didn't care. I don't tend to care too much. And the more random you get, the less you have to worry about it. So in, unless the only thing I really don't want is the same fabric touching itself. But I don't worry about how far it is away from this one. And, oh, this red is too close to this red. And you must move that red further apart. Yeah, I don't do that as long as it's not touching. Is that what you mean? Hopefully so. I'm enjoying sewing with your little your little bits, Kevin. They're right. They're all right here. Sewing them up. 
And this one is Fiona about her jacks chain again, doing it all by machine. Set myself a challenge to master set in seams by machine. Hexies in the middle, nine patches are three inch finished. Scrappy neutrals used also. That's my kind of girl. So she's that was the jacks chain from earlier. Laura Valdez says, watching quilt cam while I work on stockings for a local charity. Glad to be sewing with you tonight. Stockings, as in Christmas stockings. Please say it isn't so. It just comes around too quickly, you know. Um, by the time I get back from Texas, it'll be the 10th, I think. Then I teach uh, on the 15th in North Carolina, not too far from where the cabin is. And that's a very good thing. I'm happy to do that. It's just, it's just a one-day workshop, again, because that's the only place that I could put them. They didn't need a lecture. They just wanted a Saturday workshop, and that was the only Saturday I had. Um, was the 15th and then I go to Indiana on the 19th and then I'm done for the year so it, it's just like I can't believe it this it's just gone so fast I think we need some orange and I like this one as far as organic goes I usually ask myself as I'm working my way down one side what have I not put in this side yet already and what would make the other colors pop so you know if, if things are starting to look very very cool like I've got blues and greens and, and, and purple I might throw in an orange or a red or a black, just just to add a little bit of something. I don't want things to look too much like one color. Wow, there's a huge moth just flew by. I have major bright lights in here, and they, they, they come in from underneath the air conditioner outside. Almost time to remove the air conditioner from the window, almost. So this is how I'm working on this one, fairly organically. I did have a turquoise and then a darker navy blue, but it just it just kind of looked good in that grouping. And I'm trying to get some more color going in on this side, colors that I did not use over here so much either. I just want to spread it around. And oftentimes, if things are looking kind of dull, I'll throw in a neutral just because it adds a little spot of daylight to something that's already looking kind of dark. So don't forget to put those neutrals in your string piecing, but maybe not more than one per side. This is a red check flannel, and I'm sticking it in. I can use the back side so it's not so fuzzy, or I can let the fuzz play on front. It's a scrap quilt. I can sew flannel next to a batik, can't I? Absolutely. Another thing I like to do is use up odds and ends bobbins. Of various colors when I'm doing multicolor fabric piecing like this. It'll use up everything. Just pick and choose and sew it on. Choose quickly. I 
and hope the bobbin doesn't run out. <laughs> I just wound extra bobbins. I've got them up here ready to go if we need to. Okay, so this is another good spot for one of those funky vintage fabrics. You know what that looks like to me? Jam on toast. This is one of yours, Kevin. What was this fabric? <laughs> I have no idea. But we'll put the jam on toast where it's going to show. And there's the jam on toast next to the green string. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. Okay. I have a little drink. All that talking kind of dries out your whistle. Deanna says, Yahoo for quilt cam. It's been too long. I am hand stitching binding on two small quilts that I finished at a quilt retreat this weekend. 27 ladies sewing, quilting, chatting for four days. It was crazy and so much fun. Hope your ears weren't burning too much today as I was talking about you in Quiltville with two new members at our guild meeting today. I had showed them my finished Easy Street and one of them was thinking of doing your New Year mystery this year. Well, good. I hope that they will. It's, it's not going to be any more difficult than Easy Street. You know, if, if you liked Easy Street and the scale of things in Easy Street, it's it's going to be good. Last year, I would consider kind of an extreme um, year. We had all those Tri-Rex units. Those were a little tough. And then those, the other blocks had a gazillion pieces. This is going to just be a little simpler, but I think you're going to like the end result. All the way to the top, if I'm missing anybody, I'll try to get back to you. I'm just trying to skip around, and um, if I've read your comment once already and you've sent in another thing I may have to skip over you to fit it all in hi Bonnie so enjoyed taking your classes in San Diego last week scrap crystals and Winston ways I'm determined to finish Celtic solstice and to master those chevrons then it's time for grand illusion was wondering about the possibility of pay-per-view classes in the future from you a la craftsy etc say hello to my little chevrons she says and she shows them right here on her 301 so here's her chevron she's working on from uh, Celtic Solstice. As far as pay-per-view classes, I'm working on something with QNN right now. Um, you know, I'm a, a columnist with Quiltmaker Magazine, and they also have their own TV channel that you can pay to be a member of, and we can offer classes. Of course, this has to fit into my already cram-packed, busy schedule. So we probably aren't even looking at taping anything until next August because there just is nowhere to put it. It takes studio time. The studio needs to be booked ahead of time. And then there's all the work on the quilt. It's not just having the quilt. You have to have all of the parts, all of the step outs, all of the everything. And it's, it's, it's intensive to offer um, video classes. But if I do, it will probably be in conjunction with Quiltmaker Magazine since that's... Um, who I'm already affiliated with and we've got a very good working relationship. So there's that for you. And that's from Juliet. Jan Duffy says, I have had the privilege of obtaining my grandma's diaries from 1935 to 1938. And she talks about making the quilts that she made for all her children, including my mom. I also have her featherweight so I can imagine her using the machine and what she was thinking about now. This was in Lafayette, Indiana, where you are about to go. Oh, how wonderful. So Jan's working on this tonight. Looks like some really, really pretty pink um, wonky stars there. It's got a little print in the center. It's going to be sweet. I'm guessing baby quilt, maybe? Really sweet. Okay. And I've missed some down here. Gosh. Anita says, from Illinois, I'm enjoying Quilt Cam Live tonight. I was at Ikea last night and picked up the lamp in the clip clamp on style for traveling quilt tote. 
Love this light. I already had the lamp with the heavy base and the USB mini version, thanks to you. Very excited about this year's mystery. I was in Shipshawana over the past weekend buying some new batiks for Grand Illusion. My pinks are running brighter and a little darker, all the way to red violet. My green is lime. My turquoise is deeper, and my yellow is lemon. I am using one black and one neutral fabric this time. I cannot wait to see this. This is just going to be fabulous. And I keep promising everybody, you know, this is this is three mysteries in a row that had green. But green is kind of a neutral. <laughs> so, But maybe next year, no green, okay? No green next year. All the way up to Judy, who has a question. She says, love quilt cam. Is the light you have on your machine called Jan's Joe? It looks great. Yes, it is. Um, this is the one with the heavy base. And I can position it anywhere, and I can really get that light spotted in there. The thing I like about these lights, they have leave a big circle of light. Where those mini ones that you have to clamp to your to your machine, and which means you're putting adhesive parts all over your machine, which I don't want to do, only gives just a little tiny little pool of light right at your needle. This gives a a dinner plate size pool of light, and this light cost me ten dollars instead of fifty nine dollars, and the bulb is cool. So that's that's my reasoning there. Okay, here we have from Jen Hinwood who says, welcome home. Looks like you had another great trip. Thanks for all the pictures. So fun to see all the show and share. I've been long arm quilting feathered reeds today. White thread on white fabric. The light is gone now. Woo. Time for a sit down break. I'm now sewing cat mats for a shelter. Nice mindless sewing that uses up scraps and orphans. Love your energy. Very inspiring. And that's from Jen in Utah. Glad to have you joining us tonight. I know what it's like to to sew those white thread on on white on white fabric. It's hard to see. Did you ever um, think of? I know some people long arm with a black light because you can actually see the thread kind of glow, the white thread glow while you're sewing with a black light. I've done that. And then also, if I side light, I see not just the thread, but I see the, the texture of the quilting. I get the shadow. So I have another one of these lamps cl clip on on the handle of my long arm so that I can do a, a little side lighting job and see where I'm going. And that helps too. Okay, Mary says, I'm binding while I listen to quilt cam this time. Got to enjoy a little Bonnie time. <laughs> You've been missed. Thank you. Got my paint chips and I have two local friends who will keep me on track with the grand mystery. I changed the aqua to purple to match your jacket on your picture in front of the grand hotel. That's funny because it was like the the coldest may on record at the grand hotel um trying to finish more ufos and christmas gifts until time for the mystery safe travels to texas and the cruise thanks a lot mary i can't wait to see your colors either sharon hutchinson says will you be teaching the on the cruise or just for pleasure yes i am teaching i actually am teaching um four half day classes so it'll it'll be quite a busy little time. We've got almost a hundred cruisers with us, and it's divided up um, it, so that each cruiser gets classes with each of the teachers. So there's evening classes, there's daytime classes, and we're just going to wear them out. They're going to be so tired they won't know what they're doing, but it's all good. So we're excited. There are three days at sea. And so our classes are on the days when we're just completely surrounded by water with nowhere to go. And then when we're in port, um, we'll be hitting Honduras and Belize and uh, Cozumel. So really excited about that. Cindy Smith says, hey, from a neighbor, my first quilt cam. Great fun. I'm in Winston, too. Hi, Cindy. I'm over here in Wahlberg, kind of out by High Point. But nice to have you join us tonight. Somebody local. And then... Um, Let's see. Oh, Laura talks again about the stocking she was doing. She says, I need 160 stockings. So I had, whoops, my Gmail just stopped. We just hate that. So here's, she says she's needed 160. So she had to get an early start and she's got a whole stack of them here to show. There's all the Christmas stockings she's been hard at work on. You know, I my hats off to anybody who can start sewing on Christmas stuff before November because my my heart's just not in it, my head's not in it. But you're doing a great job. Keep it going. Okay, where were we? Now this one, Emily Elizabeth. 
from from Kazakhstan. She says, my daughter and I are tuning in over breakfast here. This is the project we're working on this week during our fall break. This morning I'm pressing and trimming before we join the pieces into a table runner. The trimming is needed because my five and a half year old is helping with the piecing. <laughs> she wanted to say that your machine is pretty. Enjoy your time at home. And that's from Emily, Emily Elizabeth and Penny in, in Kazakhstan. Holy cow. And it's Halloween. Do they I suppose they have Halloween in Kazakhstan. So let me ask you this, Emily, and also to your lovely daughter. Are you able to get cotton fabric there? Or do you have stuff shipped to you from home? Or do you stock up when you come back to the States and visit? I've always wondered what it would be like to live in a very remote place. And if my hubby told me we were going to be living in, in uh, Uzbekistan or, or wherever, I, I think I would give up on the clothes and just pack fabric. You know, I could probably replace the clothes, but the fabric, I got to have my variety. But the four, the four patches are uber cute and she's doing a great job. One more and I'm going to sew a little bit. This is from Dottie who says she's doing hand stitching tonight, waiting for the rain to get here from New York. It's been very dry and it's needed. Yeah, Dave did say it was raining when he landed in uh, Corning this morning. Cruise secret. Black slacks, dressy tops, and believe it or not, the fashion police will not arrest you for wearing an article twice. Honest. Cross my needles. And that's Dottie from Connecticut. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking um, capris during the day and dressy black slacks with different blouses and, and, and whatever at night. And I figured that I can wear stuff up to two or three times. And you're right. I won't ever see most of those people ever again. You know, the quilters maybe, but the other cruisers, not. Uh, so I've got a basic little black dress so that I can put this shawl with it one night and put this sweater with it the other night. Black slacks. I've got a, a pair of navy or khaki also. So we'll just... I was even thinking it would be fun since I have that time in Texas to go hit Marshalls or something like that for some uh, fun tops to go with the pants that I've already packed. Nobody wants to feel like they're wearing the same old thing. Oh, that just fits there. That's perfect. I might be able to get some clearance summer wear items in Texas. Yeah. I just didn't want to have to bring a whole lot because you know those state rooms are about this big and there's really not a lot of space to put your suitcase anyway. Looking good so far. Let's throw some more on here. I think it's time for orange again. My music has stopped because I was listening to Pandora and I can see from here way over to my other computer screen over there. It's got the are you still listening thing. <laughs> well, I was. I was still listening. That's okay. So let me ask you this. When you're making quilts and you find a block that you like, is there a certain size of quilt that you automatically shoot for? If you weren't specifically making it for this bed or that sofa or that person, what is the standard size quilt that you, you like to shoot for? Do you have a favorite size? 
and do you find that you like to make smaller quilts so that you can move on to the next project more quickly or do you prefer stuff that can actually cover people i'm interested to know what do we got here blue bumblebees that can go sideways that's perfect Okay, what have I not used for a while? I've been hanging on to this little piece. I don't know why. I think it's time to use it. It's just very sweet with little pink little flowers and green leaves. And you see how this is uneven? It's just kind of a, a, a wonky little uneven strip. That doesn't bother me anyway. I just lay it down there and shoot for a straight seam. Bumblebees are cute. Oh, and then the last piece of that will fit right there. Perfect. All gone. I'll just keep using that orange until it's gone. Yes, the phone is buzzing. How about what is this? <laughs> this was I was given a big, humongous bag, like one of those clear bags with a zipper, like a comforter had fit in. This is the kind of stuff. <laughs> Let me see. We have cut out of here, what, an octagon, maybe? Yeah, we're just going to strip it up and use it. It never ceases to amaze me what people will actually throw away or gift away. I'm happy to be a recipient. One more piece. And this one will be done. Let me sew that one, then we'll take some more calls. Oh, what can we use? We need something that's white enough to cover that tip. What is this? Green and yellow squares. Yeah. Oh, I think I like this better. It's like, where else am I going to use this piece? What would you do with something that looks like a circus? Cut it smaller. Cut it way small. We can use it on this one too and then just get rid of it. <laughs> I've got to trim some excess seam allowance here though.
Yeah, watch that buzzing on my phone is going to be somebody saying, well, thanks a lot. I gifted you that fabric. I thought you'd really like it. I don't know. This is just not my normal style. <laughs> We've got a big enough piece that we can use on one more. All right, let's see who's buzzing over here. Mary Wallace says, or Willis, I don't know why I want to call you Wallace. It's, it's M.A. Willis says, Mary in Boston, I like to make big quilts that can cover people. We are a tall group in this family, so the bigger the better. If I make them smaller, I get complaints. Will you be at the International Quilt Festival? I went last year, and it was amazing. Enjoy your cruise. And that's from Mary in Boston. Not planning on festival this year, only because... Um, I don't have a book release this fall. Uh, my book release was last spring, so it was represented at Spring Market. And I'm, I'm teaching at Stitch in Heaven during market time. And if I, I'm, I'm not going to get to Houston until probably Saturday afternoon, so it'll be almost done. And we've got a busy, busy week ahead. So this year, I'm, I'm not planning on it. Next year, next year I'm hoping that we can. Um, we'll see how that goes. Emily's talking about the fabric in Kazakhstan, and she says, we are actually in a very large commercial city. We have everything but Cheez-Its <laughs> and American-style craft stores. I bought my Bernina 330 here last year, and that shop has a limited supply of high-quality cottons. There are cottons in other craft shops by the central markets, but my biggest barrier is language. I am working on my Russian. I bought a lot of fabric with me. I brought a lot of fabric with me this year. The only thing I can't find is good cotton batting. Shipping is very expensive, but with teaching full time, I don't get through too much batting anyway. My daughter wants you to know that there is no Halloween here, so that's why we are making our own decorations. Our community has an event near our school, but otherwise it is unnoticed. Christmas here is fantastic, though. Um, Almady is an amazing cosmetologist. Blah, 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 blah. cosmopolitan city so much going on and so much to do we are top contenders for the 2022 winter olympics so more people will know of this diamond in the rough a few years from now i can't wait to see it i certainly hope so that would be really cool you know that's just a place that i've i've never considered much um I, i'm not even sure that i could find it on a map if you gave me a map and said, here, find it. So I'm, I'm going to have to look it up, Emily, and see where you are. Thank you so much for keeping in touch and keeping us up to date with what you're doing. Candy says, on quilt size, where did that go? There she is, quilt size. I always shoot for the largest size, king. It reminds me when my four children were small and we would snuggle in bed in the mornings or evenings and everyone gets under the same blanket. They also make great tents. Large quilts bring these sweet memories back to me. I'm a big quilt girl too, but I was just checking to see. Um, Miss Jamie Quilt says, I am a bed quilt girl and my sons both require large quilts, so I generally shoot for 88 to 108 square. Have a wonderful cruise. I'm still working on finishing up Celtic solstice tonight. So that's from Miss Jamie. Good. We've got lots in the king size uh, variety here. Lori Collins says, so glad to watch Quilt Cam Live. Just had to tell you I won four ribbons, four, four ribbons on two quilts this past weekend at our Guild Quilt Show. Celtic solstice won first place, best use of color, best piecing. Woohoo! And here's a picture. And there it is. Best use of color, and she used our colors, and she scalloped the border. Wow, that looks wonderful. No wonder you got best um, in show there. That's terrific. You know what? I'm really happy that they that they gave you that that best use of color because this color combo is not one that you're finding in the popular fabrics that are out right now. And it's really funny how you know trends chase each other, and pretty soon all of the fabric on the market looks alike and it's all the same color palette and um, I, I'm really happy to try to find things that are a little bit out of the box although I have to admit a couple of the colors that that I picked for Grand Illusion as I am wandering through fabric stores I'm finding them but I picked them directly from the hotel not knowing that they were current popular colors you know the awnings have always 
been that grand hotel on in yellow and the ceilings have always been that aqua and the white is white and the black is black and we're going to have a great time and throw a bunch of pink in there too okay those look just awesome congratulations on your ribbons ness says i love queen size but lately everything is changing to king size like yours my boys are huge my son-in-law is six seven so anything for them is huge their baby charlie is five months 19 pounds and just shy of 30 inches inches so yep even the baby stuff is huge he's my first grandbaby it's the best thing ever being a grandma well, you can start on that king size wedding quilt for that baby. Maybe you'll get it done by the time he needs it. Mine are I are usually in between king and queen. They 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 just are. It's got to at least be a twin in length to cover my boys as a lap quilt. And they want it on the couch. They want it when they lay on the couch to watch TV. They want it over their feet. They want it over their shoulders. They want it all tucked in and wrapped up. And a, and a, and a fifty six or sixty inch lap quilt just just isn't going to do it. Here is IMC Taylor says, do the quilters on the cruise have to bring machines and fabric for the classes? Um, the machines are provided by Janome, so we'll have really nice Janome machines there, plus staff to help us um, with any issues that go on. We call these guys the bobbin boys. You run out of a bobbin, they will bring you a new one and put it in. It's really nice. You know, the, out by the poolside, they have cabana boys, but in the sewing room, we have the bobbin boys. Um, as far as the fabric goes, some of the teachers, it just depends on the teacher. Um, I don't do kits. I'm a scrap quilter. So um, I tried the kit thing a few years ago. It didn't work real well. My idea as a scrap quilter was to give three mismatched charm packs and then have them bring a certain number of fat quarters in light and a certain number of fat quarters in dark and we would cut more strips and we and we would swap. But you get people that say, oh no, these are my Joe Morton fabrics and I only want Joe Morton in mine and your fabrics don't go with mine, so I don't want them. Or do you have anything else? Green is not my color. Or uh, I could go on and on and on and on about how difficult it is to provide kits um, for a scrap quilt. But the biggest thing is it's a lot of work to um, make a quilt as scrappy as I want it to be. So what I did was I gave them the cutting directions ahead of time. And I said, you're going to bring this many neutral rectangles, this many color rectangles, this many squares, and this many shapes out of your constant. So they're already cut. The whole quilt is, is rectangles and squares, and we're doing Texas tumbleweeds from my new book, More Adventures with Leaders and Enders. The whole thing is squares and rectangles, so it can easily be cut at home. And because I know they're not going to be able to get the whole thing done on, on three days when they're, they've got six teachers in, three, in those three days on board, um, I told them to bring 25% of what they need, and hopefully they'll leave with some of each block done. and. Uh, They'll be able to, to pick it up again when they get home. So they just need to bring enough to keep them busy um, while on ship. Now, Kim Deal is, I think, had a, a had another company that was providing kits for her. So um, they could pre-order the kit or do it themselves if they want. But they could order the kit from, from this one um, shop. And then they'd have everything that they needed for her class. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the other teachers are doing. But I think each teacher has their own thing and i'm happy it, to see some of both going on i'm really going to pay attention to what's going on with the other groups because one thing that i don't get to see a lot of is how other teachers teach i have no clue because i'm always um, in a classroom doing my own thing so i don't even know on a scale of one to ten <laughs> where we are or if i'm covering what we need to cover or if if what i'm trying to teach is sinking in so it, it's going to be a lot of fun but my my people are have kitted up their own scraps. And she she also says, I like to make throws about 55 by 65 because I have to use my machine to free motion quilt. I have no long arm and can't afford to pay to have it done. So that's an, another good valid reason there. Just keep sewing. Okay. And we have Melody here who says, I like to make 100 by 100 or so. You can use it on any bed, even if you have to fold it. Looking for ways to looking for ways to new mystery. I had my daughter in South Africa choose my colors. Charcoal, background, 
medium gray, white, coral, teal, and cheddar. Woohoo, baby, that's going to be nice. She says, thanks for, for everything, and I I'm, I'm, can't wait to see what your quilt turns out like, Melody. It sounds beautiful. How fun to have your daughter pick the colors. Marquet says, size of quilt. When making a quilt, I either do tween or queen, because twin can be used for beds and couches, and queen can work for a fuller queen bed, which is what I have. Love your t-shirt, your atlas, and your spiderweb quilt. It's really looking very pretty. Can't wait to start on the Grand Illusion Mystery. Love the color choices, and that's Marquet in Kentucky. This uh, shirt, <laughs> I actually found it in the bottom of the drawer while looking for cruise wear. This is probably not going to be cruise wear unless I am take it in, in, uh, on those days when we're in port and walk around. Okay. Donna Goodman says, so glad to catch you live tonight to answer your quilt size question. Almost every quilt I make is at least 105 by 105. All my kids and relatives have queen size sleigh beds, so they want the quilts to tuck into the sleigh rails. I only make smaller quilts for gifts or specific people. Okay, so Susan Ehrler says, thanks for having Quilt Camp tonight. I have my mystery fabrics picked out. I'm not a pink girl, so I substituted red-orange fabrics instead. Ooh, that's going to be gorgeous. Tonight I just finished my Halloween wall hanging, Dancing with Bats. Enjoy your cruise. I hope you have a great trip. And that's from Susan in Nashua. And here's her Dancing with Bats. Isn't that fun? I just love that. That is really great. Halloween is such a fun ho holiday to decorate for. Okay. Jan uh, Bethke says, I'm in a hotel room again and can do quilt cam live. Woohoo. Here's a picture of what I'm working on as we're back in South Texas. Next, we'll be back to Orca Bay and last year's mystery. Do you think I need to start your new one? <laughs> but I love your colors. Have a great time on the cruise. One of these years, I hope to be with you. And oh, Jan, that is gorgeous. She's got these uh, 3D tumbling blocks made out of um, nine patches there. Look how dimensional that is. Can you see how dimensional? That is just amazing. 60 degree diamonds but they're shaded so you get that whole tumbling block look there. Wonderful. I can see the, the foot of the bed too, or is that the headboard? <laughs> Welcome back to Texas. She's my Minnesota friend who uh, go, snowbirds down to, or I guess they call them winter Texans, down to um, South Texas. All right. Always shoot for queen, says Laura. And that's all she says. Simple one. Uh, liner there hello from port orange florida says um uh, i'm guessing when people don't sign their name because i have to just go by what their email address is so it's am leishman says I finished my carolina chain really loved your layout so went with it too i pieced this totally with my 1925 singer 127 treadle a great way to get competent with this machine thanks so much for all the inspiration and here's her photo oh that turned out so good so there's her carolina chain on point set with yellow triangles did you decide if you're going to do borders yet or not i haven't mine is just sitting aside and it's kind of waiting for holiday break time for me to decide what i want to do with it i love it that is just stunning beautiful all right i want to sew just a little bit <laughs> Oh, I'd like to get one more block done before we have to shut this down at night. It's amazing how quickly the time goes. We've already been here for an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, that is really weird fabric. It looks like a circus. But the colors are good. It'll just be kind of interesting, but it, it does look like a circus. I know you're agreeing with me. You're shaking your head yes. I can see you. Okay. How about the white one? So I'm thinking about.
what I want to do for a baby quilt for my nephew to be. His birthday is going to be in January. I mean, he's going to be born in January. And Auntie Bonnie has not even decided on what quilt she wants to do. This this was part of a backing, I can tell. This is the clump of batting still stuck on there. We're going to cut around that. All of those trimmings from backings usually go right into the string bucket if they're narrow enough. I was thinking something really simple, just like blue and white nine patches and maybe set it with yellow. Just something simple. I don't need it to be rocket science. But I'm just feeling kind of uninspired as far as baby quilts go. I got some gold batik, that'll work. I'm the oldest of eight children total. I have two full brothers and five half brothers and sisters, but we don't consider each other halves. We are family. But since I'm the oldest, the young ones are still procreating. And when there's that many kids, even if people only have two or three each, it's, it's a lot of kids. <laughs> There's this one. Oh, I like that. That's fine. And I haven't, um, well, I had two nephews that were born the same month, and I did the dancing nines for them. So theirs were similar, only set with two different colors. I suppose I could do another dancing nine patch. But then again, I was kind of thinking that it would be fun to play with some of the novelty prints that I've been saving and do kind of an I spy kind of a thing. So we'll just have to think about that and let that percolate a bit. I can almost get rid of that circus piece. If I put on one more of something else. Oh, no, I think. Uh, like the grass is always greener in the other strip bin. You got pull something from there but that's going to be um uh, okay purple always perks things up Okay, so now I think I can use, well, no, I don't want to put the circus on the one where there's already a circus one on that end. Grab something else. Now I can use that circus piece here. Okay.
just little bits of everything. It's going to be a really fun quilt. I think I may be taking this one up to queen size. <laughs> After hearing everybody's suggestions tonight, you're right. If it doesn't fit a bed, it doesn't fit people, then uh, it's just not quite big enough to do the job we want it to do. All right. Mommy Robin says, no sewing tonight. Watching while I make pumpkin cinnamon rolls for my coworkers. I promised a treat in the morning. I just wanted to say how excited I am for the upcoming mystery. My normal go-to colors are Civil Wars and Earth Tones. I decided to break the rule and shop for the mystery as I wanted to try something new. My neutrals include black chicken and bird sketches. My aqua has some cats unwinding yarn. This is going to be a fun quilt. Thank you so much. Travel blessings to you as you begin your last stretch away for the year. And that's from Robin. You know, I've, I've, I've done the Civil War thing. And, and I started collecting Civil War fabrics about, what was it, 1998 or so when the Dear Jane book first came out and I was in that, that first wave, I had the first edition printing of that, of that book and I collected Civil War for a long time and then I realized, you know, I've been collecting this stuff longer than that war lasted and I have more Civil War stuff to use. So now I just treat it as a color. If it's a brown Civil War, it can be a brown anywhere with any other fabric. So you'll find ways to use them up. But I am having more and more fun putting those odd combos together, like like chicken drawings next to spatulas, next to whatever is on that fabric, pigs flying, which I think, yes, I will probably get into the novelty fabric for that baby quilt just because it'll be a lot more fun to work with. But have fun with it, and then you'll have the scraps from it, and you'll have fun with that too. Gail says, Auntie Bonnie baby quilt. Make the quilt out of the baby's family's parents, grandparents, old shirts to keep the baby in love from you and his family. Nah, yes, maybe. No. <laughs> I have to also think about who it's going to. And I know my sister-in-law. Um, that's, that's, that's another thing to keep into consideration. I did in the, the two dancing nine patches that I did, I included some of my grandfather's which means my the, the, the boys' great-grandfather's shirt's in that. But I think I want to do something else. But thank you so much for that information because that's good something to think about. Maybe I'll do that in the future. This one is from um, HK Todd, who says, Do you organize your strings by color or value, or do you just throw them all in together? Also, how small a piece goes into your string pile? Underneath, behind this quilt back here, I've got big bins, and those bins have strings sorted by color family. So I have a, a yellow bin, a blue bin, a red bin, a green bin, and so forth. But I also do multicolor stuff. So by the, by my cutting table, I keep one basket. This is that this is that basket right here of multicolored strings. So everything goes into this basket first so that I have a, a good mix. And then when the basket gets full, if I'm not making a multicolored string quilt, I'll sort it out into color families and put those away. Um, but I always try to keep some random scrappy like this on hand because if I sort it all into color families, well then when I want to do something like this, then I have to pull handfuls out of each color bin and then mix it up like tossed scrap salad. So um, I do have, I sort by color, and then I have some that are all mixed up, okay? And this one's from DJ, who says, speaking of your siblings, how's Mark doing? Continuing to pray for him, and that's DJ in Michigan's UP. Um, Mark's doing great, as um, the last report showed his MRI was, was clear. I will be seeing him in January, so I'm looking forward to that right after New Year's. After um, teaching in Texas, I go to Arizona to teach, and I'm adding on a few extra days to spend time with family while I'm there. His chemo um, was supposed to last for a year, so I think he should be finishing up chemo about the time that I come to visit, and then we, we hope and we pray and we wish and we keep up on, on all of the MRIs and, and things like that to make sure that nothing is coming back. So um, thank you for the continued prayers. I really, really appreciate those. Mary says, 
This is Mary the Sailor who says, thanks for quilt cam tonight. Sewing along with you, I managed to finish the last 50 hourglass blocks for my Thefranus quilt and am now trimming the dog ears. It goes so much faster when sewing with friends. Isn't that just the truth? And speaking of going faster and sewing with friends, tonight has just flown by um, super fast and I'm sad to see it end already. I will be back um, November 10th or so. And like I said, I don't, teach until the 15th so maybe in that between the 10th and the 15th we can swing in a, a quilt cam there and then after the tw 22nd i think i come back the 22nd um we've got the thanksgiving holidays and stuff coming on but i'm sure that we can squeeze in a couple of quilt cams between thanksgiving and christmas so we'll keep up on that and i'm really looking forward to seeing everybody's uh progress on the mystery coming up we will be doing our mystery monday link ups on the blog starting with the first Monday after Thanksgiving. So the clue number one is released on Friday. That Mystery Monday link up happens Monday. So there'll be a, hopefully a lot of fun color combos and, and progress to share and things like that. If you are on Facebook, give us a join on our Quiltville's Open Studio. There's a lot of mystery stuff happening there. If you have questions or comments or need help or whatever it is, you can find answers there. Also, my regular Facebook page is Quiltville friends. So if you do a search for Quiltville, you'll find both of those. And uh, if you're an Instagram user, I've been using Instagram a lot for um, posting pictures multiple places at once. It's kind of multitasking. But if you're an Instagram user, you will find me at Quiltville underscore Bonnie. And I hope that you'll give me a follow there as well. What else can I say? Google Plus. I've been sending more and more stuff over to Google Plus. I know lots of more people are, are using that. So not just the blog posts are going to Google Plus, but I'm trying to remember to send more stuff over there, just like I send the, the Facebook stuff. We're trying to get it everywhere you can go, from, from Twitter to Tumblr to Instagram to whatever. We're spamming y'all. So um, until next time, keep sewing. Keep um, reading the blog. I will be posting what photos I can from this week coming up, um, spending time in Texas and all the way up to the cruise. And I will send snippets I can when I can find free Wi-Fi places of the cruise. But I'm also going to have a lot of neat stuff to post um, just in the queue while I'm gone. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. In other words, I ran out of things to say. So it's a good time to just... Cut it off. Night. Bye-bye.